our world has one interconnected ocean. A vast blue expanse, critical to life on Earth. And there's no better animal to represent the ocean's beauty than the killer whale. They live in every corner of the ocean, from the Arctic to the Atlantic, the Southern to the Indian, to the Pacific and beyond. The killer whale story is the ocean story, and it's one we all share. We are one world. Communicate for no, I'm a high son of the high soul. The apex form, the killer whale. The killer whales are as big as a box, faster than an Olympic swimmer, high flying and powerful. We're going to see all of that today. 
update and more. These and other behaviors provide an environment full of enrichment. We spend days, weeks, months, and years building relationships with our whales. This creates trust, and that allows us to do some amazing things. For example, when you visit the doctor, you present your arm to draw blood, or step on the scale to see how much you weigh. It's much the same with our whales. Throughout today's experience, you'll see our killer whales moving together in unison. These synchronized behaviors allow the whales to strengthen their social bond and problem solve as a group. This is just another reason why they're known as the ocean's top predator. Their scientific name is Orsinus orca. Their common name is the killer whale. Each of our five whales have their own personal names. To our Cayucan, and during this right here before you are Takara, Sakari, and Kamea. Kamea is the youngest whale in our pod at just eight years old. And the mother, Takara, is the oldest at three years old. Now, Takara is the matriarch, and that means that she is the leader. These whales trust us and play an active role in their health and well-being. Through the use of positive reinforcement training techniques, we're able to teach our whales husbandry or healthcare behaviors. Joining us in the slide out are our trainers, Casey, Emily, and Caitlin, to help demonstrate just a few of these behaviors. Hey everybody, Caitlin and I are over here with sisters Sakari and Kamea. One of the first behaviors that we teach the whales is a fluke present, where they present their tail flukes to the trainers. A fluke present not only allows us to look over the whale's entire body, but it gives us access to the easy to sheet see shallow veins that run on the underside of their tails. Our veterinarians are able to collect the blood sample from these veins at least once a month during their monthly physicals. The whales are conditioned to remain calm just as you see Kamea and Sakari doing right now. Throughout today's presentation, you'll notice that we're giving the whales tail rubs and back massages. Their skin is very sensitive. And so this is just one of the ways that we can build our relationships with the whales. That's right, Casey. I'm over here with Takara, who we are celebrating today, as she is the mother to Kamea and Sakara. Now, another important diagnostic tool is how much each whale weighs. Once a week, on a killer whale size scale, in one of our adjacent back pools, we can ask them for a behavior called a slide out. Just like the car here is demonstrating. Now, while she is in this slide out behavior, you may notice that a large portion of her body, right here from her dorsal fin, all the way down there to her tail loops, are still in the water. This region is called the peduncle, and it has several hundred powerful muscles. So in order to get an accurate weight, we ask the whales to lift their tails up. Just like this. As of Tuesday morning, Takara is weighing in at over 4,600 pounds. All of these weights allow us to make sure that our younger whales, like Kamea, are growing properly. Our older whales, like Takara here, are staying at a healthy weight. All of these diagnostic tools help us ensure that our whales are healthy and thriving. And the care isn't just physical. Mental stimulation and play are vital, and we surprise and engage with our whales every opportunity. Play is how killer whales teach their young to hunt, and for the adults, play is important too. It seems that they just enjoy having fun. Making time for play is an important part of life for killer whales and for us. Observational learning and mimicry play a critical role within the life of a killer whale. From the moment they are born, their play follow the leader with their mother and other members of the pod. Here at SeaWorld, our killer whales play follow the leader with us by watching us and mimicking our movements. How about we play a quick game of follow the leader with all of you out there? We're going to start off with everyone to my left hand side. Let's raise our left arm high to the sky and give Sakari and Kamea a great big wave. Check it out. They are paying a very close attention to you. Killer whales are very curious animals. We often see them spy hopping or leaping completely out of the water to get a better look at their surroundings. 
Now that particular behavior is known as a side of bow. And we're gonna see if the man is up for doing that an amazing demonstration. All right, left hand side, let's take that same left arm, and what we're gonna do is point it at the man, and on the count of three, swing it across our right shoulder. One, two, three. And she's off. So it looked like the man got a little bit confused right there, and that is perfectly fine. She's gonna head back to her trainer, Casey, and we're gonna see if she can give it another opportunity. And she's off. She's gonna use those powerful muscles within that peduncle to steer herself down to the bottom of this 40 foot deep habitat and lift her body up and out of the water. Here's Kamea. Awesome job, Kamea. Killer whales can communicate in a variety of different ways and utilizing vocalizations is just one of them. We're gonna shift to the right hand side of the habitat and see if the car can demonstrate just one of those vocals. All right, right hand side, are you ready to help out? Let's take our two index fingers and wave them back and forth like we're conducting an orchestra. Awesome signal, everyone. Now, did you know that scientists believe when a killer whale leaves out of the water, it's a way of communicating and letting their presence be known. You see, sound travels four and a half times faster in water than it does through air. So when a killer whale leaps out of the water and crashes onto the surface, that behavior is known as a breach, and the sound it creates can be heard for miles around. Let's ask the car to demonstrate this high-flying behavior. Take your two index fingers and swing them across your right shoulder. One, two, three. Great job. Now Takara is going to be using her pectoral flippers, just like Kamea, to maneuver herself and steer throughout her environment. And if you just so happen to be sitting in that splash zone, look out. There's a chance you may get a TNT midway. Ladies and gentlemen, give yourself a round of applause for helping us demonstrate some incredible behavior. As you can see, killer whales can communicate by making an impressive splash. SeaWorld's research and observation of the killer whales within our care has shed light on many mysteries about these amazing animals. For example, we have learned that the gestation period for a pregnant killer whale is 17 months. That is information impossible to obtain out the wild. However, some information can only be gathered through field observation. That is why SeaWorld works closely with our partners like the Norwegian Orca Survey to help further our knowledge. Killer whales are remarkable, powerful animals. And perhaps the best expression of that power is when they hunt. Killer whales stand apart. They have no natural predators and just about any other ocean animal can be their dinner. Depending on where they live and their chosen prey, they've developed some epic hunting techniques. Off the coast of South America, killer whales will beat themselves, riding in on waves just long enough to catch prey. They'll also create waves that knock animals like penguins or seals from ice cliffs. Most importantly, they cooperate, communicate, and coordinate as a team. Here's footage of killer whales corralling a school of herring. A whale dips in and feeds, while the other whales keep the fish together with swipes of their tail fins. In the ocean, killer whales create waves to hunt, use fluke lamps to stun their prey, and can even beach themselves up and out of the water. For our whales, it's just a fun demonstration. But for you, it's time to get wet! Splash!
They can eat over several hundred pounds of food a day. Depending on where they live and the time of year, their prey can vary. Unfortunately, things such as overfishing and pollution pose a serious threat to many populations of killer whales. Killer whales are impressive animals, and it's pretty obvious why they're the top predator in the ocean. That means killer whales are invincible, right? Wrong. Killer whales depend on a plentiful food source and a clean environment. They're completely dominant, yet completely dependent. When it comes down to it, killer whales are not the most powerful animal in the ocean.
and deepened your appreciation for killer whales just as they have with all of us. We will continue to learn about these remarkable animals and hope that you do too. Thank you so much for joining us today and have a whale of the day here at Zero San Antonio.